I didn't even know what a video game was, really, just some vague idea. That being you would take some real life thing and actually put it into the game. Well, in some limited fashion anyways. Like if I was inside a castle, I'd just have to make the inside of a castle. But Shemu taught me that wasn't the case at all. Shemu was the first game I worked on. And using that experience, I've been able to give feedback on scene production for dramas I'm working on. Freedom is all you need. I was at a Seiyu department store in a bookstore at the time. There, Yusan says, Hey, Yoshimoto-san, what do you think of this? And then he wrote Shemu and Spirit Tree. I still remember that vividly. The first time I heard that name, yeah, gave me chills. Thought it was a great title. A kid wants to get revenge for his old man and goes in search of his father's killer. That's the heart of it. And I felt strongly that the story should not stray from that point. There were a lot of other great ideas in there, but still I felt the main character needed to be unwavering in his convictions. Yet, when you actually play the game, all that other stuff is what makes Shenmu so interesting. Ryo feels he must avenge his father, but is at the capsule toy machines playing away. I think that's the humanity coming out. Those who really want to get into it, become the character and go straight ahead can do that. But for every gamer, there's a different way to enjoy the game. That's a really interesting aspect to it. So when I sat down to play it, I was like that. If your old man has that kind of house, he has to be a person of some character and integrity. Having grown up under a father like that, you'd probably feel rather restricted. But without a doubt, he'd probably be very fond of him. At his dying father's last words, well, in the game, he may not have reflected on it much there, but there would be a lot going on through his head about what his father did. That would get more and more imprinted on him. And as he goes out and meets all these different people, he would come to know where he came from. With the death of his father, it would be like Ryo continuing on in his father's footsteps. To make it sound cool, that is. His brain is always working, and he's seeing and thinking f much farther ahead of someone like me. When we are having a meeting, I often feel like that. I'm not the type to be adversarial with people. I want to make something that will make other people happy. There are probably millions of people playing games because of Yusan. If Yusan says, hey, this is pretty interesting, I think they'll be happy too. I don't know what gamers want, where their compass is pointed. If I make something and Yusan is happy with it, it must be good. If it isn't, it'll show on his face and you'll know it's boring, and the players will think it's boring too. That's kind of how our relationship stands. When I first became involved with Shemu, I'd just celebrated my 40th birthday. It was at the Sega offices with a few of us there. At that time, I didn't think I had changed at all, but I probably had changed. Now, 17 years, 15 years having passed until Shenmu 3, I have probably changed even more. I had no intention of that happening, but with each line I wrote, yeah, it changed me. I think about it, and I couldn't tell you how, but I'm excited to test it and see for myself. I'm ready to be part of it again. It's like meeting myself as it was 15 years ago. It should be a really nice opportunity. It's definitely not TV work. 
It's being asked to play the same person in a part you did before. Being able to do something you did 15 years earlier should be an invaluable experience.